Hello students, in this video we will look at how to build um, proper confidence intervals. One thing we have to remember is when we're building a confidence interval, we assume, one of the assumptions is that we as, um, assume that it comes from a normal distribution that has an average value. This average value, however, is not known to us. Because that value is not known to us, and we want to find out what that value is, we take a sample. Now, a couple benefits in sampling data from normal population is that it saves time, it saves money, among other things. One of the disadvantages of take, uh, using sample data is that it is not 100% accurate. So there's a balance between saving time and money and other key advantages against um, being uh, losing some accuracy. So when we develop or when we take that this sample, we could have a sample mean that you know is at that value or we could have a sample mean down here or a sample mean way up at the upper end, some right in the middle. It is possible that a sample mean could be um, could be quite uh, large in terms of relative to our population mean. Now remember that our population mean value is not unknown so we take a sample in order to guess what that population mean value is. One thing that we'll be learning in this video is how to develop a confidence interval which is basically a sample estimate which has uh, a range attached to it. So this range would be something like you know something that looks like this you know each of these sample means is going to have a plus or minus value it has an interval or a range now the purpose of this range is to increase our chances of the population mean value actually being including being included in this uh, in our interval in our estimate so if we were to take this sample mean we would find that um, some of those sample means, some of those sample data would include the value of the population mean, a couple of them wouldn't. If we were to devise um, or create a confidence interval that has a 90% chance or 90% confidence with that, we would expect that 95% of the confidence, 95% of the sample means that we were to collect would include the actual population mean. So in essence, there's a 95% chance that any one of our sample means, in, which includes this interval of the plus and minus range attached to it, would include our key value that we're looking for. It's still unknown, but if we develop a confidence interval correctly, we are then we're having basically a high level of confidence that this value here is somewhere within that confidence interval. So in this section, there's three confidence intervals that we'll look at. Two of them um, are based on the mean. So let's uh, use green. So the first one is confidence interval for the mean when this value is known. So that symbol represents a population standard deviation. So the question uh, would give you the data would include the population standard deviation. Our confidence interval is going to be written like this. This last part here, let's do that there. This is called, just as a reminder from our last section, that's called the standard error. And this, everything after the plus and minus part is called the margin of error. Let's make that a better plus. So it's a sample mean plus or minus a margin of error. The margin of error is based on a Z value, which is linked to the confidence interval, uh, laws of probability and normal distribution, the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So this is our first look. We can look at one example, confidence intervals. This example, this is from your course package, random sample of 90 businesses revealed that on average they spend seven and a half years on the job before being promoted. It has a standard deviation 
of 1.4. Now to make this really clear, let's just add that word in it. It has a population standard deviation of 1.4 and our job is to construct a 95% confidence interval for the average time spent on a job before being promoted. So let's go to our uh, whiteboard here. Um, let's clear off what we don't need. So the, uh, the question tells us that the sample average is 7.5 years. Um, standard deviation is, sorry, the Sorry, the wrong symbol here. Population standard deviation is 1.4 years. Sample size is 90. And we want to build a confidence interval at the 95% level. So that's the um, data right from the question. So we're going to build a confidence interval. It starts with a sample mean. 7.5 plus or minus a margin of error. Margin of error is based on the level of confidence. So because standard deviation is known, uh, we can use a Z value. Z value based on a 95% level of confidence is 1.96. Multiplied by the standard deviation, divide by the square root of our sample size. So our confidence interval, 7.5 plus or minus 0.289. That is our first confidence interval. This basically states that there is a 95% chance that this value, which is not known to us, that's why we're taking a sample of 90 business people, but the population average is somewhere within this interval, 7.5 plus or minus 0.289 years. Our second type of confidence interval is worded like this one key difference is we don't know the sample we don't know the population standard deviation so we're given let's just highlight that we're given a sample standard deviation so so our second type is confidence interval for the mean that symbol the population standard deviation is not known to us so our confidence interval formula is going to look somewhat similar. Let's just erase that, getting ahead of myself. It's going to be a sample mean, plus or minus. Now whenever this population standard deviation is not known, we have to use S, which stands for the sample standard, standard deviation. So we're going to use the sample standard deviation Whenever we use S, uh, we can't use the Z values. We have to use a T value. And that is a different distribution value that we will uh, be using for uh, this situation. And I'll explain how to actually find that T value in a moment. So getting back to our confidence interval, we're going to use a T value instead of a Z value. We're going to use a standard deviation sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation and we divide that by the square root of our sample size. So the standard error is still the same. It's still the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Our margin of error is still the same. Margin of error is everything after the plus and minus part of the confidence interval. But the question now becomes how to find this T value. how to find the t-value. The t-value is based on um, two characteristics. So t-value, first thing we need to know is the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so the sample size minus 1. And then we need to know this value, alpha. Alpha is our chance of error. Alpha is 100% minus a confidence interval and then we divide it by two for confidence intervals. So those are the two things we need in order to, to find the correct t-value. Once we do that we go to a t-value chart 
and we look based on the degrees of freedom and our um, alpha value divided by 2. So in our question we can work on is located here. This is also part of the course package. Restaurant, collected information, married couples, sample size is 20, the average is 2.76 and a sample standard deviation of 0.75 and we want to construct a 98% confidence interval. So let's write down what we know. We know the sample size is 20, um, sample mean is 2.76, sample standard deviation is 0.75, and the level of confidence we want is 98%. Level of confidence we want is 98%. Um, alpha is 2%. Half of alpha then would be 0 0.01. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. Degrees of freedom would be 19. So we look at this distribution chart or this T value chart. We're going to be looking at this column here and at 19 degrees of freedom. So we want this T value, 2.539. So our confidence interval is going to be 2.76 plus or minus 2.539 times our standard deviation of 0.75 divide by the square root of 20. So our confidence interval, 2.76 plus or minus 0.4. There's a 98% chance that this value, which is what we're actually looking for, is somewhere within that confidence interval. Now the third type of confidence interval we, we uh, perform in this section is one dealing with the proportion. The confidence interval for the proportion is going to look like the sample proportion value plus or minus a z value times the standard error of the proportion, which is the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. Because we're um, working with confidence intervals, we'll have to use the sample proportion to find that value. So the example we're working on is in your course package, random sample of 150 public service employees included 51 women. Construct a 90% confidence interval for the proportion, keyword, um, of women working in the public sector. So the data in the question basically tells us that the sample, the proportion of women working in this, in the sample is 51 out of 150, which is a value of 0.34. Sample size is 150. Our confidence interval we're looking for is Let's just go back to that for a second. Is a 90% value is 90%. So now what we have to do is place those values in our confidence interval. Delete this here. So we know the sample proportion is 0.34. The z value for a 90% confidence interval is 1.64. times the square root of 0 0.34, 1 minus 0 0.34, 0 0.66, divided by our sample size of 150. So it's 0 0.34 plus or minus 0 0.063. So we could change this to a percent if we want. So this value, the population proportion is not known to us. We uh, develop a, a, we conduct a sample in order to find an estimate. We're 90% confident that this value, the population proportion, is somewhere within that interval, 34% plus or minus 6.3%. Last little bit I'll show you is if we go to our T distribution value chart, we have five columns of data. We can also, um, I would recommend putting or understanding that the confidence intervals um, are situated like this. Let's color those red. That didn't work. So the 80% confidence interval, 90, 95, 98, so forth. And the last row includes Z values.
So you can look at your t-distribution chart for z-values.